concrete, got a wee bit of uh, outdoor carpet, a bit of waterproof carpet down. Step two, get some racking in, some shelving. I'm storing my boxes on. Let's keep going. If I look like I know what I'm doing here, folks, it's an illusion. <laughs> I didn't have a mechano set when I was a kid. This is the first one. shelves were so cheap they came in bits that size did quite a lot of uh, assembly I've still got the shelves and things to put on and I've got um, some cross struts cross members to put on uh, but that's an easy task so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off building these shelves up and then I'm just going to haul all the gear that's over your shoulder there back into the, the garage I'm still calling it a garage it'll be a gear room shortly I'll haul it all back in here just in a big pile and then tomorrow I'll get uh, cracking again and I'll start putting it away. So I've got loads of racking now, loads of shelf space. I've got space uh, underneath where the tripod is there over the other side for some big storage boxes. So it's all going to be good. It'll be worth it when it's done. This um, Dexian type racking, this is very, very lightweight um, stuff. It's not uh, Dexian by any means. Um, it reminds me of a job that I did when I was working at the field station in the Himalayas. We, our, our business was growing plants and we needed a glass house for overwintering some of the sensitive plants but also for propagation and so on. So you get the picture. So we built two glass houses actually. One was a big, big glass house, over a thousand square metres um, of, of glass. But remember, that fuel station was high in the Himalayas, many hours from the nearest road. Everything had to come in by pack pony. So we bought this um, modular uh, greenhouse with, it was uh, twin wall polycarbonate. Um, we couldn't use glass. We had glass on the, the, the sides and the gables, but um, the, the roof had to be twin wall polycarbonate because of the... Um, ice storms that we got uh, in the, especially in the um, autumn and sometimes again in the spring actually and, and these ice balls would have just shattered the uh, horticultural glass that you would normally uh, glaze a production house with so um, so we had sheets of polycarbonate on the roof but all the metal work was all brought up on pack ponies and it was all about that size with millions and millions of wee coach bolts it took us many months, almost about six months, I think. It took us about half a year to put that, that greenhouse, that glass house uh, together. And it was painful work. It was cold, I remember. Every day that we seemed to be working on it seemed to be a cold day and trying to hold these uh, wee bolts and tighten them up with a spanner with freezing cold fingers and the wind howling across. But boy, was it worth it. Uh, once we got that glass up and running, we were able to grow such a wide range of plants. So this is what this reminds me of. Um, this, <laughs> this has been an easier task. And um, yeah, brought back some happy memories. Anyhow, feathering again. Let me get this finished. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a night and we'll get back to you tomorrow. I'm going to keep filming 
the establishment of this gear room so you'll see it gradually coming together but it's getting late I don't want to disturb or upset the new neighbours by making too much noise all the banging's finished now so I'm just going to quickly work away get everything loaded back in here and then um, call it a night so we'll we'll have another go at it tomorrow folks so let me crack on Hey folks, how you doing? I'm still working away on this gear room. I've been at it uh, on and off for several days now. I was out this morning. It was an absolutely glorious morning. Misty murky to start with. And, and then the mist slowly burnt off. Mo and I went away down the coast. We had a long coastal walk about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or a dozen kilometres up and down over the dunes and along the seafront. Anyhow, we had a glorious walk, but I didn't take the camera with me then. Got back here, been working away inside for a wee while, so sorting out some personal admin. Still trying to catch up after moving house, but we're in this lockdown of sorts again, so I'm staying close to home. I just thought I would upload a wee video just to keep in touch and let you know what I'm up to. So all my tools are all packed away and um, I can't find them. I've got a... I've got, one of my trailers is, is loaded full of uh, all my tools and it's all um, tightly packed and it's covered over by a big hap and tied down and everything so I don't really want to open it up so I'm trying to bolt these shelves together to give them a little bit more rigidity and add a wee bit strength they're pretty lightweight but they're, they're, they're good enough for what I need none of this gear is particularly heavy and I've got the heaviest stuff down at the bottom anyway but I'm, I'm trying to put some additional bolts in just to give them a wee bit of extra strength but I've got no tools so I'm working with my I've got a multi-tool here that I carry when I go out uh, on the bike so I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to tighten these things up with with the multi-tool which actually is a bit of a fiddle but it seems to be working quite well so sorry I'll stop I won't make a noise when I'm chatting to you so I'm going to crack on with this and um, and I think I'll upload this wee video just to show you the, the, the gear room. Once I've finished tightening up these bolts, put these boxes back, then I'll show you um, a little bit of the layout here that I've designed and and then as I say I'll probably upload this a wee bit of a blether just to keep in touch. So let me crack on here folks and I'll get back to you in a wee while. Well folks, this is the last task in organising my gear room, sorting out my book collection. I had a massive book collection, but a number of years ago I uh, divided it into two or three different parts. My technical and professional books, I sold them off. And I remember during my student years how hard it was saving to buy some of these books. So the proceeds of the sale went to the purchase of some new gear for me. And then a big part of my book collection I simply donated to charity. But I kept my books on exploration. This is a Ranul Fine's book, Beyond the Limits. Can you see that? Maybe a wee bit far away. And he wrote a very nice piece in the front of this for me. He says, To David, a kindred spirit, with best wishes, Ranul Fine's. 2006 he gave me that. So I'm going to get these books on these shelves here, I've got another collection over in that corner. They're books that I dip into now and again, so I don't need them to hand. I've got a wee office space upstairs um, in the house there, but I don't really want to fill my office with books that I, I only look at now and again. And I don't know, there's something right for me anyway, having my books next to my gear. So I'm going to get these uh, shelves organised and and that's pretty much the last task to do. Then I'll give you a wee look around. I said that already. So let me get on with this.
That's a lovely book. That's uh, H.W. Tillman, Bill Tillman's book covering the, the seven mountain travel books that he wrote all bound together in one volume. Tillman was my hero when I was a boy. I actually uh, have a friend that uh, knew Tillman quite well. The, if you haven't read them, the Shipton and Tillman adventures, especially the tales of the exploration and opening up of the sanctuary in Nandi Devi are, are definitely worth a, worth a read. He disappeared on a, um, on a voyage. He started sailing the southern seas and in, in his later life still very much an adventurer and the boat was lost at sea. Bill Tillman. Cycling home from Siberia. Shout out for Angus. Sorry I haven't called Angus. Um, I said I was going to call and give you a heads up on a couple of routes on the, the, the Kulin the week before last, but I was so busy moving house, so that's my excuse. Anyhow, um, I'll pop by and I'll drop that off for you. It's quite an old book, but I think you would like that. For the sake of the viewers, Angus is a, a, a neighbour, a former neighbour before I moved house and a long distance cyclist. I watched him grow up from a wee boy and then out with his skateboard and onto the bike and cycled the world he has. A grand lad, so I'll drop this off at some point for you in the not too distant future, Angus. Hope you're well. Well folks, that's the books away. <laughs> These wee bookcases that I got are they're bending under the strain. They're a wee bit overloaded there. I bought them because they just happen to be the right size to fill the space here when I measured it up and I got them the same place that I got the, um, uh, the metal racking so I was able to put in just one order and get one delivery. Anyhow, it's good to see the books on a shelf of sorts. Better than in boxes. <laughs> There's a layer of books in behind them, that's why the shelves are buckling so much. I've read most of these books two, three, four, five times. I love just dipping into them now and seeking out favourite passages. This is Peter Heller's book, picked off the shelf there. Heller High Water, Surviving Tibet's Sangpo River. I did an expedition to the Sangpo Gorges a number of years ago, underneath a huge mountain called Nanshi Barwa. The Himalayas is essentially, it's a great arc. And in the west, the, um, the first mountain, almost like a pillar or a gatepost, is Nanga Parba and then you've got this great arc of mountains with Everest sitting just off centre I suppose and then as you come east the the, the final massive 8,000 metre peak in the chain is um, Nanchi Barwa and I was very keen to explore the, the lower slopes and uh, around the uh, Yarlung Sangpo going in from Tibet across the plains and navigating by river and that was a great adventure. It's a pity I didn't have a YouTube channel in these days. I could have showed you some real adventures, not the not the stuff that Dave Outdoor Scotland gets involved in. They're a wee bit tamer than my early years when I did go into the big hills and on long expeditions, sometimes uh, traveling for, uh, yes, uh, a year or more at a time. Anyhow, I have fond memories of this area, this particular part of the world. One of these expeditions where you don't really thrive, you survive. It was pretty hard going. And, and beyond the Yarlung Sangpo and Nanshi Bar where you get into the, the plains, the high level plateau and the, the Qinghai plateau with the, the Qinghai Lake. and Just amazing. Ah, folks, I hope this virus is Kicked into touch at some point soon. I hope we get a, a way of dealing with it. 
so that I can do some more distant travel. Well that's it folks, that's the gear room, more or less squared away. It's a fairly simple layout. I've got three sets of shelves, I've got uh, all the smaller stuff on this side, so up this end there's a lot of canoe, kayak type, water sports type stuff, and then there's uh, bicycle stuff, and then there's general camp stuff here, there's cooking stuff, and then we get into, there's a, actually there's a little collection of boots in there, my, my different um, types and styles of boots for different seasons. I've got extra space to expand into. I'm going to thin out some of these boxes, actually some of them are uh, rammed full, so uh, I've got some spare boxes in behind me as well there, so I've got space to thin the boxes out a little bit and be more specific with what's uh, actually in the boxes and they're really easily accessible. If you remember my old gear room, the boxes were stacked on top of each other. It worked okay, but invariably what you were looking for was always in the bottom box, so you had to lift things off. Now I don't have to worry about that. The stuff up there in these uh, bags, that's the, um, <laughs> how can I describe it? That's the soft furnishings out my van, so They'll be staying there until the day I sell the van. I don't suppose I'll ever be putting any of that back in. And then on this side, can you see that? Shall I turn the camera around so you can see it? So on this side, uh, I've got expedition bags. There's quite a lot of sleeping bags in, in here. And I've got some clothing that's um, sitting right opposite the paddling gear. So that's my uh, uh, dry suits. I've got a couple of dry suits, got a wetsuit, some flotation, uh, personal flotation devices. And then in the bottom, which you can't see because of the bikes and because of this, um, this big shelf um, that's blocking your view, I've got my expedition gear. So there's a lot of Arctic and Himalayan gear uh, stored down there, heavyweight gear. Um, there's some expedition boxes underneath there. The reason I've got this big shelf in here is because I've still to build a shed. I'm going to build a shed in the corner of the garden and I want to rack the, the shed out as well, but I'm not going to um, do it in this style. I'm not going to, basically, I'm not going to spend any money on it, folks. So I've got some shelves up there on the other side of the garage. I'll, that's what they're sitting up there for. They're uh, destined for the shed, as is this big work surface here, which I'll just um, cut to shape and it'll, it'll be a bit of a bench for me for working on. The bikes don't live here, they sit down. I need to get some sort of bike rack um, installed so that I can store the bikes just at the entrance to the garage, the gear room. Let's not call it a garage. And then I've got some big trunks here. Let me show you the trunks. So I've got eight of these trunks. I've got four on this side, four on that side. And they're, they're, they're reasonably well organized. This is um, mountain tents, if I can... Um, use a generic term. So this is uh, a variety of different tent uh, styles and designs. My big tents, um, I think I mentioned, are on the shelves there. I've got a big TP tent and I've got a mess tent and a big uh, Van Gogh Mark V there on the, on the racking uh, and on my left there. Um, so these are kind of mountain tents. These are tents that I can strap to my back. I don't need a canoe to carry them. I can put them in the rucksack and take them up into the hills. Underneath that, is it's also overnight shelter but it's mostly tarps and um, bivvy bags and uh, there's some bivvy tents in there as well. When I was working in the Himalayas I did quite a lot of travel in the winter months where the chance of precipitation was almost nil but it was super cold and therefore um, shelters such as Gore-Tex tents and things worked really well. Uh, Uh, to, um, to to provide shelter from the elements, but uh, really there was uh, zero risk of condensation, I suppose is what I'm saying. In here I've got a collection of uh, rucksacks, so I've got my big expedition rucksacks in the bottom there, and um, some military uh, rucksacks in there, and then in the top I've got, you know, sort of... Um, 40, 50 litre rucksacks and then there's a few day sacks and actually there's a couple of running sacks in there as well. And then on the other side, well, there's um, 
there's a collection of things over there actually it's a bit of a mishmash over there some camping gear and uh, there's some old gear that um, I haven't used in many years but it's got fond memories so I don't want to get rid of it um, as you might suspect some of it is my uh, Himalayan gear so um, I, you know, I, I tend to you know <laughs> pretty much dress like this when I go to the, the Scottish hills uh, but when I was in the Himalayas I, I had a fair amount of specialist gear down gear and uh, wind suits and that sort of stuff and I've got them um, stored over there so that's it folks that's the the, the gear room uh, more or less um, set up I think just out of camera shot here I've got a series of um, boxes and that's a 35 millimeter slide collection that's all my photographs of the Himalayas which at some point I might get around to digitizing and uh, share a few of them with you but that's a job for the future I can see that my filming lamp is getting a bit dim so I think it's time to wind this video up. I'm going to take the camera indoors and I'm going to sit for half an hour or probably an hour and do a little bit of editing. I'm not very fast at the editing and I'll see if I can stitch together a wee five minute video for you. Um, the filming lamp has just died. Uh, see if I can stitch together a wee video for you. Not the most exciting but I thought you might like a wee update and uh, a wee glimpse at my gear room. So thanks for watching folks and I hope it's not too long before I get back to you on the next one with a proper outdoor video. So stay safe. Bye for now. Bye folks.